Hello. Hey, Clemens, how's it going? It's going well. Oh, that's good. Um, I'm re registering my regrets for the next two weeks. Uh oh, vacation, I assume. Yes. Going in a place exciting or just hanging out? Uh, I'm going to uh, um, a, vi a big lake in north of Berlin mm -hmm. uh, for a week, and then no firm plans for the for the for the second week. But I might be driving around a little bit in the convertible. Oh, just nice to get away. Yes. Yeah, I've been I've been doing this, and I've been uh, posting pictures you know, on the weekends from my loops that I did through uh, Germany, seeing old towns, etc. Uh, and I also put a bunch of stuff on Flickr. Cool. Yeah. That was good during the COVID during the COVID weeks. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's not looking like it's going better for you guys. Well, it's interesting. I, I keep seeing different things, right? On the one hand, I keep hearing reports about the number of cases going up, but then I also at the same time see charts that show the number of people dying is going down. Yeah, that's a trailing indicator though, because that's, people are, are in the ICU for like two or three weeks and then they die. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm waiting for, is to see what it, what it looks like in two weeks, yes. So uh, the, the better number to look at right now is actually the, the positivity rate right, which is the number of positive cases versus how many tests are being done. Mm -hmm. That number is going up along with hospitalization. So yeah. those, are, those are the more leading indicators. Interesting. It's, yeah, it's all terrible. Hello, Christoph. Hello. I hear you're having very nice conversations. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about death and stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Before we get to the serious things, yeah, we actually don't have a lot on the agenda today. That's that's good. Well, it's summer yeah. too, so yeah. And I have not. I just I just realized that. I have not yet tweeted about the fact that we did merge the schema registry spec. There you go. Tweet away. I will. All right. Tommy, are you there? Hello. And Ray, are you there? Oh, wait, no microphone yet. Uh, what about Ginger? You have a microphone yet? No, no, Ginger. It's fascinating sometimes watching how long it takes some people's computers to like wake up and get in gear. Hey, Colin. Good morning. Morning. And Ginger, you have a microphone yet? Yes, I'm here, Doug. Excellent. And Ray, you have a microphone yet? Yes, I am. Excellent. Perfect. Hello, Nick. Hi, Doug. Morning, Lance. Hello. Hey, Klaus. Hey, Doc. Remy, are you there? Yes. Hello.
Brian, are you there? Hello, good morning. Yes, good morning. Hey. And how about Eric? Good morning. Good morning. Vinay, are you there? Yes, good morning. Let's see if I can spell your name right. Yeah, sorry. Seems forever. Sergey's mic just will not turn on. How funny. Hey, Doug. Oh, hey, Mark. How's it going? Awesome. Excellent. All right. Boy, it feels like these three minutes are taking forever. I think we're into like month four now, so. <laughs> Wait a You're talking about the virus, aren't you? We already, yes. <laughs> we, already, we, already, we already had that discussion. That was a morbid discussion. <laughs> you missed all that. <laughs> I, I was just saying that it takes forever for my clock to switch over to 12.03, so. <sighs> I, I, just, I just pasted the tweet. Ah, cool. So you can spend the time retweeting it. Oh, here we go. Let's see what the tweet is while we're waiting. Do, 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 do. Hopefully it's safe for work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just randomly click on it while we're recording. There we go. Excellent. Great. All right. Um, am I missing anybody? I hope it's safe for work. Yeah. Well, I've had, I, not that it hadn't happened. Uh, Sergey, are you there? Yep, I'm here. All right. All right, it's three after. Let's go on and get started. <clears throat> Let's see, 17. All right, so anything from the community people want to bring up? I think we have all timers on the call, so nobody knew. All right, SDK. We do have an SDK call scheduled after this one. I believe there are just a couple things on the agenda, um, if we have enough people to make a quorum. Um, so please stick around for that if you're interested. Um, I don't see anybody from the SDK working group. Let me just double check. Nope, I don't see anybody, so no update there. Um, okay, before we jump into PRs, anything from the agenda that I forgot to add that we should talk about first? All right, in that case, Klaus, you get to go first. Come on, there we go. Let's yeah, so after the last week's yeah. discussion, I just, um, did the changes um, I was asked to do or we discussed. So I added a, a normative statement that it must be a level one template now. Uh, I put it under type and adjusted the hierarchies of those nested um, headlines. I also further down, I also added it to the examples. Any questions, comments? Okay, any objection to approving? Perfect, thank you, Klaus. All right, so the next three are technically um, <clears throat> too soon for us to approve, so I just wanted to draw your guys' attention to it. Um, the, I believe the first two, or maybe they're all three of them. Yeah, the first two are about SDKs, in particular governance stock, and common procedures and stuff. We don't necessarily need to go through it here unless somebody has something they'd specifically like to bring up about these. Um, like I said, I just wanna draw people's attention to it so you can review it, comment on it. Um, we are trying, at least in some cases, to have a consistent process and governance across the SDKs just for some consistency. So we will be looking at putting documents in the main uh, repo under community. Um, so anyway. When you, when you get a chance, please review those, comment, okay? And we'll be looking to approve those next week, I guess. Okay, any questions or comments on any of those people want to talk about? Hello? Oh, I'm sorry, was someone trying to say something in there? Okay, in that case, moving on. Um, this one, very minor, um, since it just came in this morning, otherwise I would have just normally approved it. Someone wanted to add into the, our demos doc, a uh, little demo they had. Um, I'm assuming no one has any objection to this. Normally I would have just approved this, but since it just came in, I thought I'd put it up there. 
Okay. Not a, no objection. I'll go ahead and get that one in there. Thank you, everybody. Oops. All right, uh, Slinky, are you on the call? Doo -doo -doo -doo. No, he is not. Oh, yes, yes. he is. There he is. There you are. Okay. Of these three, I think these are all yours. Are any of these three you'd like to discuss today? Uh, nope. No? Okay. At some point, we probably need to decide at, at what point do you want to discuss those or close them out one of the two. Okay. We don't have to decide right now, just going forward. Okay. Um, so, that was technically it for the, the meat of the agenda. Um, last night, as I was thinking about, obviously the agenda, um, I was thinking that I mentioned in last week's call that we were talking, that I mentioned we should probably start looking at doing some sort of testing of the discovery spec itself, whether that's a full blown interop or just encourage people to implement it to see what kind of feedback they get or something. I, because I think, I think the spec is in a fairly good state for people to actually start playing with it. Um, and so I thought, okay, maybe we could do some little interop type thing. And I was thinking something basic, right? People choose to put up a service provider, maybe use GitHub as a sample, um, trying to follow the, um, the adapter that we set up for GitHub with all the cloud event attributes, mappings and stuff. And then people can write clients that talk to the various services that are out there or servers that are out there. I'm sorry, discovery endpoints that are out there, testing the various things that we define the spec, verifying responses. So for example, um, you know, if you, if you do you get the same list of services from this query versus this query that kind of stuff you know does all the data and the data match does the searching seem intuitive that kind of stuff um i don't know that was just sort of initial thought i had and i just wanted to sort of open the floor up for discussion see what people thought in terms of other ideas for moving forward and doing some sort of base level testing of this thing uh, remy your hands up if I may, I, I was discussing with my team yesterday about like all cloud events. And basically, we are using so often GitHub that they were like, I'd like to see another type of uh, example. So it might be good to try to not use GitHub for once and uh, play it with something else. Uh, I think it was a valid uh, question from my staff. OK. Uh, any suggestions? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> yes. Well, anybody else have any suggestions or ideas in that space? Actually, I guess let me, let me ask a higher order question first. Do people think it's too soon to start pushing people to do implementations? Am, am I, is my assumption incorrect? It's never too early for writing code. That's a good way to phrase it. I like that. Clement, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Clemens, like, uh, you came up with that um, registry PR. Do you think it will be applicable to Azure as an example? Um, the, the, the schema registry? Yeah, like to give a full sample with um, like Azure and not GitHub. Um, it, it's, you know, it's just, a, it's good. It's just a document store in the end. So um, we can, you can use that for anything and for everything. So my, my understanding my understanding is that um, over do we have Red Hat people on the call? Uh, Lance is there, yeah. Yeah. So I think I think there's 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 activity over in Red Hat lands. Um, uh, um, Eric had, had been had been making comments. I think. Um, I think there there are some aspirations to go and do some implementation, and we have some aspiration to do some implementations, obviously as well. Um, but yeah, for the schema registry, there should be a um, you know simple app, maybe a node or an ASP.NET, depending, which which j simply implements that interface. To ideally, just generated from the open API, and then plums that on the simplest possible document store in the back, maybe just a blob store. Mm. That'd be great, and um, I would do that if I found the time uh, right now, but I just don't. <laughs> so I mean, we're we're on we're we are from a product perspective, we're we're looking at at, at implementing that interface. Um, but it will be great to have not only one, but actually multiple examples that keep, people can go and build on that are not entangled in all the product stuff that we have, but are just effectively clean start. And like a, um, that's like an that's something that I I would do, but I'm also about to go on vacation, so. Um, maybe maybe after, but if there's someone who's uh, 
um, uh, you know, adventurous enough to go and venture off and validate that open API uh, document, that would be great. Right. Anything else? Remy, I assume your hand is old, right? Okay. Yep. Anybody else have questions, comments, I mean, uh, ideas on some sort of coding effort? Is anybody willing to raise their hand and say, yes, they'll try to work on an implementation? I'm going to put mine up because I think it'd be kind of interesting. Sorry, it's Christian Solov here. Your question is related to the schema registry implementation, correct? No, no, I was no, talking okay, about discovery. So because I got mis misled, misled <laughs> with, with the previous sentence. Okay, so, okay, thanks, yeah. No, I mean, obviously, you know, we could, we could oh, talk about the schema registry too. I just was focusing on the discovery one, but. Yeah, I mean, of, course, have, of course, sorry, the, sorry for interrupting. The, so. the, I think of the, the, the discovery, the discovery, um, uh, the subscription API and the schema registry are somewhat related. And uh, having, so, so actually having a, a project that, that, tries to um, build on top of whatever a simple database is, tries to prototype them out all at once would not be terrible. And it doesn't need to, I don't think it needs to be, needs to be, you know, running in Kubernetes and being, uh, you know, 400 lines of YAML deployment stuff. Sorry if I'm insulting anybody. Uh, <laughs> they should be using right. K-native. Come on. So, um, yeah, yeah, I know. So, so I think if someone were to throw together, <laughs> Scott, um, if if someone if someone were to pull together like a Node app or or you know, a Go app, I don't want to insult anybody. Um, Just exactly keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Keep taking comments. Uh, with it, backed by a very trivial uh, little SQL database um, or even a file store, that would be just that would be just fine. But I think we we want to go and see how that all looks and ultimately how that all looks in code. Whether whether someone who tries to implement it, ideally, really someone who's not the author of the spec, um, can come up with something that that to, basically to validate it. So I'm. Turns out I'm for two of the two of the three pieces. I'm probably not the person to go and do the implementation because um, I may have too much context in my head. Okay. So, <laughs> so but it, I, think, I think having a project that does that does all those things and proves them out in the simplest possible way would be great. Yes, I agree. I was just wondering whether you wanted to insult another project while you're at it, but that's okay. No, I, I mean, I can, I can think of a few if that's necessary. <laughs> We left provisions to be able to bind this data into other protocols, right? Uh, yeah, yes. So we have uh, the schema registry is currently has a, has a REST API because that's the low hanging fruit. But it should all of those things should work eventually with uh, with other protocols. For MQP, we have um, a path. Um, via the MQP, HTTP over MQP spec, which is something that we have in Oasis, over in Oasis in the, in the, um, uh, as a draft. And I think that's, those two things might compose really well for that kind of an API. Yeah, but we have to go and think about how we can go and map that onto the other protocols. I, it's just something that I haven't done yet. So the way you see it is like to create uh, another repository where basically we put that simple uh, implementation yeah. Uh, if. if by any chance I have time <laughs> and uh, I start, I should start just on my own repo, like on GitHub, and then we'll merge later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm not uh, promising anything because, like, uh, no. everyone. And, 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 and if you want to turn that into a thing that you're going to sell to the world, fine. It's just, I think, I think that what we need is the proof point that the stuff that we're doing here in all theory is uh, actually holds together in practice. Yeah, I do agree. Yeah. So, so more, so more than one implementation would be great. Um, but if we can start with one and get get an implementer an implementer's opinion, that will certainly help. Yeah. Well, that was my intent here was to try to get some multiple implementations of this thing going. Um, and I, yeah. I agree with you, Clemens, that it would be great if we actually did all three specs. Um, I was just trying to do one step at a time, and I thought the discovery spec has had more uh, reviews than the other ones at this point. So that's why I was thinking that might be a good place to start. What's um, the due date you're thinking on that? I don't know. Monday? No, 
I don't know. <laughs> Once a month of time. <laughs> I mean, they gives you all weekend. I mean, well, come on, Scott. Um, I don't know. Do you want to, I mean, we could push for, I don't know, a couple weeks, maybe. I, I can't imagine that the, the discovery spec is actually that difficult, yeah. to be honest. I think the hardest piece is, piece is actually just figuring out what all the metadata looks like, to be honest. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in my favorite language. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm hearing Scott as a possibility. I'll stick my hand up there. Anybody else? Just so I know who to reach out to to poke on. Uh, just <laughs> the, what is your favorite language, Scott? <laughs> go. Sorry, I don't know you well. <laughs> Yaml. No, Go is his favorite. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, I'm going to put your name there since you said you may do something in this space. Not that, well, not, not that it means anything. Just, just putting your name there, just for fun. Okay. I have to ask a few colleagues. Perhaps we can also. Too late. You're in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think I could, I, I could do something. Excellent. Okay. So I will probably check on TypeScript more. Than... Okay. Well, this is a good start. Okay. So let's, let's see what we can do in a, in a couple of weeks. I won't nag. I may remind people next week, but I won't nag too much next week. But then the following week, maybe we'll ask for status and see how people are doing um, and see how it goes. Okay. Um, uh, the, yes, sir. Do you foresee this, these implementations uh, one day inside the cloud events as the case or, or do you think this should be just external? That's a good question. I think that goes back to what Clemens was saying earlier because I think what Clemens was suggesting, use my own words, was maybe we should have a reference, impl reference implementation of this available. Um, yeah. that, it, that is something we have not talked about. Uh, I know the SDKs kind of come close to that. Um, but we haven't talked about that for these specs yet. I think it's definitely a valid option. If the group wants to do that, I, I don't think there's anything that stops us from doing it. Okay. Well, because they are not related to, to cloud events in, in some ways, but... Well, they're not related to cloud events other than we're going to be sending cloud events, yeah. but they are related to the other specs yeah. that we're working on. Yeah, right? exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if that's what the group wants, we can definitely do it. Okay. Anything else on the uh, interop or implementation discussions? Does anybody want to volunteer to look at the other two specs yet? Or should we hold off on nagging people about those? Okay, not hearing anybody jump up and down yet. Let's focus on, I guess, discovery first, see how that goes. Okay, any other topics for the agenda? Because we are technically at the end of the agenda. Well, it's my okay. daughter's birthday, so she will be happy that I'm going to be going upstairs again. Right? Well, don't get too happy. We still have the SDK call after this. So. Yeah, that's going to be quick, too. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> okay, in that case, let's just do a quick final agenda or um, attendee list. Uh, Kent, are you still there? Kent or Oleg? I'm here. Oleg. Okay, I got Oleg. What about Kent? Whoops. Okay. Anybody else that I missed for the attendee list? All right, in that case, um, I'll get Grant since he's on the process of joining. Um, in that case, anybody who's not interested in the SDK, you are free to leave and enjoy the rest of your day. <clears throat> we'll start the SDK call in about a minute or so. Thank you, everybody. All right, thanks. Yeah. All right. Grant, you finally got a microphone. <laughs> Welcome. Yes. All right. Kent, I don't suppose you came back yet, did you? Were able to come off mute? Okay. 
Lanka. All right, does anybody else have any other topics for the SDK call? These are the three that I had thought of. Uh, I had a question, I guess it was the leftover from last week that I met or last time was uh, as part of the template of docs and licenses and all of that, did you guys discuss uh, whether or not to add a code of conduct? And if so, which one? I don't believe that officially came up as part of the discussion, uh, but we probably should add one. And my recommendation would be to just point to or copy in the one from uh, uh, the CNCF. But anybody else have any other ideas? I'm, I'm totally sure I have not read the CNCF code of contact, <laughs> so I have no opinion. <laughs> I, actually, it was funny is um, I happened to be looking at just yesterday because uh, the, uh, what is it, the, the, the workflow spec is, you know, trying to go forward with an, as, an S, uh, as a sandbox project. And they got held up because they didn't have a code of conduct, even though technically it doesn't require them to have a code of conduct. Um, so they quickly added one and they weren't sure which one to add. So I pointed them to that one. So it seemed reasonable to me. Um, the only thing was a little- A, a, yeah, a code of conduct is not a place where we should be innovating. <laughs> Probably not. Um, but what's, what's, what's funny about this is the CNCF code of conduct um, in the little section that says, you know, if you're concerned about something that happened, you know, notify us. Well, when it, in the notify us section, it points to Kubernetes, not to the CNCF, which I thought was kind of amusing. Um, so I did ask about that and they said, yeah, that's a, a work in progress to, to fix that. Um, so that's the only thing that's a little bit awkward about their, their code of conduct. I have a lot of things to complain about at Kubernetes, but I don't, I don't <laughs> think you want that in our, in our spec. <laughs> Are we still picking on Kubernetes? Is that part of the same thread here? That will never stop. Uh, yes. Okay. All okay, right. So, uh, yes, I, I agree with you, Doug, that we should just use the CNCF one. Okay. So let's do this. Um, uh, use CNCFs. And so the qu quick question, I, I would prefer to just have one code of conduct and have all the SDK repos point to it for that consistency factor. Are you folks okay with that? And that way we can only do one, we only have to worry about one PR instead of like seven or eight? Yes. Okay. But that that could be standardized for sure. Yeah. Okay. In that case, I'll take the action and put So, Doug, just so that I can nuance that, are you saying that each readme should have a section that would point to a common code of conduct? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I want to make sure that there is a pointer from each repo. Yes. Yeah. Whether the repo, whether it's in the readme or their governance doc or something, we can figure out that later. But yes, each repo should point back to the main CE repo for the governance or the code of conduct. Okay. Does that sound fair? Yep. Sounds okay. good. Uh, so technically, yes, I still have a gazillion different PRs to do. So yeah. Um, okay. Cool. All right. Um, anything else before we jump into the other stuff? Okay. Um, so these two actually are two PRs I put here, not because I thought there was anything we had to discuss, but just I wanted to bring them up to see if there's anything you folks wanted to talk about. Are there any, I have to be honest, I have not followed any discussions going on on those two, so I don't know if there's anything controversial or worthy of discussion. If not, we can skip it, but I just want to give you folks the opportunity to, to bring something up if you want to talk about it. Uh, Lance? Should the, the other one, the process docs, also be brought up? Oh, did I, did I skip one? Wait a minute. You got the protocol buffer representation. Oh, sorry. No worries. I'm sorry, I grabbed the wrong one. Okay, there you go. Thank you. So are there any, anything on these two PRs anybody wants to talk about? Uh, one thing about mine is that uh, after I finished to write it, I, I recognized that uh, I implicitly assume that uh, who owns the rights, the right rights to for, for a repo has also the rights to to publish the releases. And that's not true. 
because we don't have automation in, I think in most of the SDKs, we don't have automation to perform the releases. So I, th I think that's something that was already brought up in the past. And I, I don't know, I think we should, in my opinion, every SDK maintainer should take like an action item to, 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 to set up a release automation. What do you think about that? Anybody want to comment on that? Yeah, we're, um, John is uh, uh, going to set up the, um, um, so there's some automation on the C Sharp SDK already. Um, but we are, um, what we're missing to be complete in the .NET world is uh, uh, strong names, strong name signatures. And so John has, has took, taken the action item to go and, and do that. And I think once we have strong names, then we can basically just go and and, um, and automate builds to uh, and push them straight to to NuGet. So for C Sharp, we're going to do that. Okay, cool. Uh, well, I I think I'll take the action item for the Rust SDK, and if yeah, Scott, if you can help me, <laughs> we can do the together the one on uh, on the Golang SDK. Yeah, I was taking a look at that right now. And, and I'll do also the one for Java SDK. Okay. Anything else about these two PRs people want to talk about? Um, quick question for everybody on the call. I was going to have the full Cloud Events group approve these. Um, is there any reason that we should not do that and limit it to just the SDK maintainers? We might use the new voting process, which is explained in the PR. <laughs> there you go. That is an option. Anybody have any opinion on whether it requires everybody in, in, in cloud events or just the SDK people? Lance? I don't have strong feelings about it, but it really only affects the SDK folks. Right. And if I remember correctly, what did you say in here for the process? Was it a week offline or something like that? Are, are you talking to me, Doug? I don't know. Whoever wrote this PR up? <laughs> I, can't <Me. laughs> I can't remember who wrote it. No, so, no, so the, uh, I said that depends on the situation. Like uh, the Endover, uh, I, all the numbers are definitely provisional. Uh, just okay. throw them. I I don't have a strong opinions on the numbers. So yeah, so uh, that, yeah, that's right. You I'm said one week. Uh, yeah, I'm expecting from the people the some feedback on that. Uh, but uh, Endover is one week, and Archiver project is two weeks. Uh, okay. Well, so tell you what. Are both these PRs actually ready to go, or are there still outstanding comments? I think mine is ready to go. And yours I mean, was I this one, right? I did raise a question in there, which uh, Francesco suggested maybe just become an issue, and that's that to do, should we consider changing the default branch name? That's probably not worth talking about in this PR, but something to think about maybe for the future. You mean like not master, but something else? Yeah. Yeah, we can talk about that at some point. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, re the reason I was asking whether they're ready to go is because if we want to do you know, that one week time period, then we could say, okay, today's the day where no significant changes are planned, maybe typo type stuff, but between now and next Thursday is that one week period. And we can just nag the appropriate SDK maintainers to, to vote on, on the two PRs. Does that sound fair? So Doug, I, I I shouldn't bring this up, but I will. Okay. Is there a limit to the number of SDK maintainers? Is there a limit? Not that I'm aware of. So one one language could have fifty maintainers voting. That is technically true. The way I correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Francesco. That's the way you have it set up, right? We don't we don't try to say one one. One SDK can overrule everybody else because they're so large. You don't you don't deal with that situation, no, right? I don't deal with that situation. I I, know, I don't deal with that situation nor with the situation of adding maintainers. I mean, I 
I just left this for another discussion or time because it's a bigger discussion. And I mm. think uh, your point uh, is part of the discussion, I think. I'm not sure, I don't know. <laughs> Mark, is that something you think we need to resolve before we merge this PR or is that something we should look at later? I think we, we, you know, just in terms of governance, we need to understand, we, we're saying that we're gonna improve this. So if we're approving it, what does that really mean? I'm not sure I understand the question. I mean, the rules are what they are in the sense that if we follow this, it's, right. okay, but fine, the, the SDK rules. Point, then, then, then the SDK, SDK maintainers will be voting to, to uh, make any changes, right? True, we, yes. Yeah. Do we really need to vote on it or use it sort of a different inverse approach where, okay, people commented at some point of time, there is no conflicts, there is no contradictions. And that effectively makes it, because I don't assume that each document is, once it's merged, it's not changeable. I mean, things will change, things will evolve and we'll, those changes will be addressed separately. So for example, looking at this document, sure, let's say merge it right now. Doesn't mean that it's not gonna change, but if there's no immediate conflicts, why do we need to pay, wait and, and let's say for the case, if we do have 50 maintainers, like get everybody to vote, people, you know, just throwing it out there, see if it sticks. I'm not 100% sure what you're suggesting. Are you suggesting that we don't need to even vote on this? Or are you saying we could just vote on it and, and, and worry about these issues later? No, I'm suggesting not vote on it. Rather say, okay, well, it's been out there for, let's say, a significant amount of time, you know, five, six days. People, the activity in terms of comments has stopped. There's no conflicts. There's no contradictions. It, it's mergeable. Okay, yeah. Okay, so, Slinky, I'll get to you in a sec. The reason I think this is different than say a PR in one of the SDKs itself is because first of all, this is going to the cloud events repo itself. And technically the process we try to follow is, unless it's so blindly obvious that uh, as, a, as a co-chair, I can do it myself, like syntax type changes, right? Anything of any significance gets approved by the group. All right. And that usually means Thursday phone call, people get to review it at least two days in advance. And we basically take a vote like we do on everything else. So technically, this should follow that exact same process. The only reason we're doing slightly different here is because this is really only about the SDKs, right? And so I feel like we still should have some sort of vote around this thing. I, I, it's, I, it's just the scope of who gets to vote. I'm just saying that like, I kind of almost got it from your example where you sometimes you say, does anybody disagree? And there's a silence and that means everybody agree. So. Okay, I see what you say. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. I apologize. I misunderstood. The reason this is the reason this is different is because people understand that when they on the Thursday phone calls we're going to do votes, right? And if they choose not to vote, if they choose not to join the call, they know they can speak up on the on the PR to raise an objection. These, I don't think we gave fair enough warning. If I if we had known in advance that we were going to prove these today, then yes, we could have done that. If I had mentioned it two days ago, so people could have raised an objection. That's the only reason that this is a little bit funky. Fair enough, send out and say, listen, we're gonna vote on ABC. Yeah. So Doug, that, that might be an interesting thing, which is, should we put into this governance doc that if there are major issues with the, the SDK governance, that it can be escalated to the main cloud events group for discussion and voting at that level as well. So in other words, yeah. as long as there's no problem with how the SDKs are maintaining and agreeing, then the main group doesn't have to get involved. But would the main group be an escalation process? Yeah, that's interesting. What do people think? Because I know uh, Francesco on, the, on last week's call, you you mentioned the possibility of having to introduce some kind of TOC kind of thing. And I think Mark, what you're suggesting there is something a little bit similar, right? The authority above the SDK, it's in each individual SDK. So Slinky, your hands up. Yeah, so two things. First, uh, note that at the end of the document is clearly stated that to change these rules, uh, we need a vote following the voting process that I, that I state here. So. 
I mean, if we, if we pass these rules, then let's make sure we like it. Uh, and then uh, I see what Mark you're talking about and I wish to address those issues too, but I did this draft just to uh, talk about security patches and quality of service, which, are, which were longstanding issues uh, in, the, in, in this community. Um, I really wish to talk about these other things, but I think that we may need other PRs for that. Um, yeah, is that okay for you? I mean, in general, for the community, if you want to take action items separately to to fill this document with the other bits we need, like uh, the one that you said about uh, should we, uh, when we have a problem, should we escalate? Uh, or uh, the other one that you said about um, uh, the uh, what happens if one SDK maintainers uh, overrule the other, so... Mark, any comment on that? So, sorry, I think what you're saying is that I should just propose additional language that I think to this PR. Yeah, no, what I'm saying is that uh, just, uh, or we add things to this PR now, or we, or we merge this PR and then uh, in the next uh, iterations of this document, we add these things. I mean, as you prefer. But I think these things should be addressed as well in this document. It's just that I didn't. All right. Well, let, let me look over a little bit more because I had some other feedback in different areas. So uh, let me propose something. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the other thing with, with this document uh, that I was going to comment on, but since we're on the call, I'll comment it here. It talks a lot about security patches. And Doug, do we have a secure way of uh, being being able to uh, handle security patches. I'm In not order, aware of one, but do we have a do we have a, a mailing list that someone could use if they find a security issue and not have to go through the PR uh, issue path? Yeah, I, I, correct me wrong, um, but I don't think we have anything that's set up yet, right? Anybody? So, you know, I think, I think that's likely something that we will need to address at some like point. A, do you mean like a mail, like a security at uh, uh, cloud events? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Probably we need it. I, I assume, I assume that we, uh, we discover CVs from GitHub Dependabot. Uh, I know that Dependabot does, uh, does, uh, PRs, private PRs that only maintainers can see. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to the CNCF infrastructure folks to see if they can set up another email address just for uh, security type of questions. And we'll make that global for all of cloud events, not just for a specific uh, SDK. We'll make it route it to the appropriate people. Yeah, I, you know, it's, it may be unlikely that we see this in the, in the main cloud events. Uh, code, but as we're talking about subscription and uh, discovery, those mm -hmm. things might be more open to the internet. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So I'm hearing that there may be some changes in particular to well, either one of these PRs based upon uh, people looking them over. Like Mark, you said you may want to suggest some wording changes. Um, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the one week thing that we've been talking about here. Um, are people comfortable with waiting on t to start that one week timer, which means we probably won't make next Thursday? Or do we wanna say, you know, wait, one week, let, let's turn that on after we merge this PR. And for this PR, we'll just go back to the normal rules that Cloud Events has, which is as long as the changes are done by Tuesday evening. I don't, I, I'm, it's up to you guys, depending on how, it's how quickly do you want to force these things through? Uh, I think, I think we should go a little bit slow on that. So yeah, let's go okay. next week. Okay. So we won't start this seven day timer until we're all sure that everybody's done the reviews and has all their comments in. So we'll hold off. And I assume that's true for both PRs. Is that true for everybody? I'm good with that. Okay. Quick okay. Um, Doug, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. Jessica said that uh, this PR primarily was uh, obviously is going to expand, but primarily it's for security patches. 
maybe it would help because for example i'm looking i'm reading it for the first time and i could provide a few comments or or areas questions and that could prolong the process maybe we should slim down these prs to say listen this is a security patch part of it and then eventually we agree on that we agree on something else and so on and then at some point of time we agree on these chunks and then we can assemble the entire sdk governance document because we have things that are related to security patches here, I'm assuming, and then things that are not related. And that's, that could, I don't know. Um, Scoping issue, that's just. Anybody wanna comment on that? I, I have a comment, but I'll, I'll let other people go first. So, so the way I kind of view that is, um, I, don't, <clears throat> I don't personally have a problem with splitting this out into several PRs, but I'd rather wait until someone does a review and says, you know what, this particular issue is such a, a scary beast that let's pull this out to have a separate discussion because I can't even live with this as a starting point, right? And I can't wait for a follow-on PR to fix it. I, I'd, I'd rather wait until we come up to that situation rather than just assume we have to split it out right now. If that, that's just the way I kind of look at it. Anybody else want to, okay. Anybody else want to comment? I mean, I'm not even a maintainer, so I don't get a vote. So <laughs> it's up to you guys. <laughs> so that was my immediate reaction was, was exactly what you just said. Is there okay. anything to do that right now? Okay. Okay. Anything else related to those two PRs then? Okay. Um, oops, hold on. There we go. All right. So I mentioned um, in one of the... Uh, I think it was in the Java SDK um, and one of the PRs there that we talk about this on, t on this call. Uh, Francesco, I, th I don't have the issue in front of me, but you opened up an issue where, I'm sorry, you opened up a PR uh, where you created a milestone for the Java SDK and then you merged that uh, relatively quickly. Um, and I th and my interpretation of what happened there, because some people raised some concerns about that, my interpretation was that a milestone is a relatively light thing. It's 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 a little more real than just so just telling people to go grab you know the head of the of the of the branch, um, but it's not like a release candidate where it says hey this is what we think is the final thing. It's just sort of a well, I kept using the term snapshot in my head, um, oh. but I wanted to bring up that discussion because I know there were some concerns there. So let me let me get off and let other people talk. Um, this is Oleg. Um, yeah, good. I'm just coming from the world where. You're correct. The word snapshot has a very distinct meaning. The word milestone has a very distinct meaning. And the word release kind has a very distinct meaning. So it's not just, oh, grab it from the head. No, we have snapshots for that, for example. A lot of projects publish snapshots daily, nightly, um, after each commit and so on and so forth. There are various different rules to do that, at least in the Java world, right? So milestone means you have some significant, again, it means we have some significant feature that you want the community to start uh, demonstrating. So you announce it, you explain what it is, you say, this is why we're doing this milestone. It could change, but there it is out there. People can start using it. It's actually a step above the snapshot because we have something important to say. So it's not, we can't just release milestone just because enough time went by. And then obviously, as you said, release candidates and so on, they, um, so, and with that, there are certain patterns which uh, people are familiar with, uh, especially within a particular community that they're gonna be looking for. And eventually when we, and so Sergey's comment was kind of related to that. Say, listen, there's maybe not, not an issue of releasing milestone because we done some significant work, but maybe you should change it to M1, uh, something that the community, something the community will Sorry about that. Uh, something mm -hmm. that can, will, um, will understand and will accept and so on and so forth. That's all. So, and, okay. uh, and it didn't go the right direction. So to speak. Yeah. So it seems to me that, it, that there was just a, uh, for lack of a better phrase, just sort of miscommunication in terms of the process or the terminology and stuff. And so the first thing that ran through my mind was, okay, the best way to solve this <clears throat> going forward is to just document what the Document what the process is, right? Document what we think. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Document what a milestone is. Document where these candidates are. And <clears throat> as long as everybody understands and agrees on what they are, 
how they get created, when they get created, what is the process by which they get created, then at least we don't have that, mis that miscommunication. So I think it's just more of a document documentation of our process issue more than anything else. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. So I have a I sort of a high order question here. Is this the kind of thing that we should look for commonality across all the SDKs or should S each SDK be allowed to do its own thing? Oh, I definitely each does because patterns, these patterns and expectations from the community could be different in different language environments and so on. So we can't just put it under the single blanket and uh, I, I would be personally strongly against it. But okay. Me. Anybody disagree with each SDK having their own uh, process for this stuff? Lance, you're coming off muted. Do you want to chime yeah, in? Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I like commonality. I get the point that uh, every language, uh, you know, has has its own idioms. Um, but but we're talking about things like milestones and and stuff like that, right? And that to me seems like it should be a cross cutting sort of you know sort of thing. So let me ask this, since my hand's up, Oleg, um, when you talk about each repo, each uh, SDK should have their own, they have the freedom to do what they need to based upon their particular language uh, uh, style. Um, do you see that being more <clears throat> as a release kind of a thing? Um, the reason I'm asking is because I'm wondering whether it makes sense to have commonality just in terms of terminology and and not necessarily when things happen so for example let's say we defined what a milestone is and the rules for who can create a milestone when we define what a release candidate is and how that process happens and then we decide what a release is and who gets to vote on whether a release passes or not but we don't necessarily say that every single sdk has to have all three levels right some may choose to have all three some may only have releases but at least then there's commonality in terms of how you approve each one of those or what they actually mean. Does that make any sense? Yes, it does make sense. And I agree with that. And I guess uh, um, just to clarify uh, uh, to Lens, my point, it's not about Go has snapshots, Java has snapshots, but Go doesn't, or we should not have it or whatever. It's more about, for example, yes, snapshot has a, a meaning. We can define what that is and it doesn't necessarily have to follow a particular uh, thing. But once we agree what the snapshot is, how do we identify the snapshot artifact itself within Java world versus within other languages? So, and that's, that's, that's where I come in because for example, with the Java world, it's not just what we want. It's there are tools, there are products out there who will do parsing, who will who do, do just so give me the latest one and they will know how to pick the latest one. So we need to be very careful whether we do it lowercase, uppercase, M1 or milestone and so on. So there is much more to discuss there. We who've been doing, you know, <clears throat> within Spring community for the past 20 some years, we actually had a meeting right now uh, a couple of weeks ago and had to introduce certain minor changes to our naming schema because of certain things. And I don't want to hijack the meeting for that as well, neither. But I'm just saying that we can't just throw some names out there and, and, and say that's, that's how we do it. it there, there's much more to these names um, than... Okay. So, so you're okay, it sounds like, with defining the common terms and even possibly <clears throat> the common sort of process by which those release are, and those artifacts get approved and, and stuff like that. It's right. just you want each SDK to have the freedom to do its own naming, for lack of a better phrase, kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, that, because, okay. yeah, that's, it's, it, there's just moving parts that outside of our control that... Uh, we may pay the price if uh, if we don't follow certain because if, if everybody expect milestone to be an m1 and you don't then you effect, you effectively remove yourself from um the features and capabilities of that particular system or that particular process and if you try to build community i mean why would you want to do that in the first place right so is it so is what i wrote here fair actually let me, let me, before i ask that question does anybody else want to chime in because what, what I think what I wrote down is what I'm hearing from at least all I get. Oh, Sir, Sir Jay, go ahead. Okay, so uh, as the author of um, the comment, uh, the request, I just wanted to uh, point out that my main concern is not that was, 
like the selection of the wording, for example, be it milestone or release candidate or whatever, but rather, uh, and we are seeing it not the first time, but lack of uh, any process in the Java SDK of uh, reviewing and accepting uh, big changes. Like it was just dropped as a pull request and merged instantly without any approval of any other maintainer. And if I remember correctly, we do have more than one maintainer in the Cloud Events Java SDK, which kind of suggests that um, at least some formal process of reviewing should be done. And um, my comment was um, just an attempt to kickstart the discussion, but, uh, and it's okay if it would be ignored, but I was surprised that other maintainers did not approve uh, the pull request before it got merged. And it went to the Maven Central, by the way, um, after a second attempt, not on the first one. So I believe uh, code review could catch that issue as well. And yeah, it's the same concern, maybe new file, but the same concern, like how should we proceed with the Java SDK and uh, how is it maintained? And if it is maintained it actually. Yeah, and, and I think that's what we're trying to address here is by defining that, that process. That way people are not surprised, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So does this, do these two bullets summarize? We, were, we want a common process, um, uh, common uh, artifacts, right? Milestones versus release candidates versus releases. But each SDK is going to have the freedom to figure out, you know, how they package those up, what the names are, whether they actually use all three or how many we have, those kind of things. Does that sound fair and, and accurate to what we talked about? Um, as long as we're talking about two process, like release process and um, like the maintains process or a project's uh, process. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought we are talking about. Yes. Because yeah, I, well, I it's, mean, it's both. It's, it's, it's process, but then defining okay. the actual okay. artifact types themselves, yes. Because I think it'd be kind of weird if one SDK has milestones, but another one has foos. I don't know. <laughs> Some other word that implies milestone, right? Snapshot, right? If one does snapshot and one does milestone, are they the same thing or not? That's, that's kind of weird to me. Snapshot and milestone are to totally not the same things. And just for your to complete your example, there's also, we don't use it, but there's some people use it with work in progress, right? Right. For, for something that is better than uh, a snapshot. Uh, but that's just, you know, one of those things. But I think to Sergey's point is, he raised a, a greater point. The, the, the schema question, whether it's milestone or M1, is just a, a particular incident. But Sergey's point, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, that there was really no discussion, no debate, nothing. It was just bam, bam, done. Right. No, I understand. And that's why we're trying to write down the process. That way there's yeah. common understanding. Code or, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay. Would somebody like to take an action item to take a first stab at defining these two bullets? I mean, it may be part of the, the governance doc thing that we talked about. Anyway, uh, Slinky, your hands up. Uh, if you are gonna to, uh, if you are going to automate the process, then I think we don't even need to document it. I mean. That's that's what I wrote on an, on on an issue after I did the release. Well, even if the, so, my my it seems to me that even if you have an automated process, it still seems you need to. It still seems like you need to write down the fact that it's automated or when it happens or when the automation gets kicked off, right? Just so people understand. Oh yeah, of course. How yeah, how to yeah. use the automation. Yeah, of, yeah. Course. <laughs> of and, course. And 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 when it happens, who has the authority to kick it off? That kind of stuff. I. I I think the, the, the bigger concern here isn't, it's just people just need to understand how the mechanics of the group is, are, are going to be, right? How, when things happen, by, by who, when, and stuff like that. And so that somebody who doesn't understand, or isn't, who isn't part of the group, they can read this document and say, oh, okay, I understand why this milestone was automatically created, right? It's because the process says it gets created every day, if, you know, every, every Friday at 3 p.m., right? Whatever. As long as it's documented, I think that's what people are more concerned about. And then we need to publish somewhere. What are we actually calling that? Like, like to Sergey's actual original comment. 
Yeah, and I think and yeah. I think that goes back to what you were saying earlier, where each SDK was going to probably decide the the name of each of the, the 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 syntax of the artifacts for their particular SDK. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does somebody want to take an action item or volunteer to to write up the proposal for these? We can try it. Okay, because I'm not sure I'd be, I'm not the right person to do it. Okay. Thank you guys. Oh. And to be clear, this will be, the initial pass will be at the cloud events level. So it's cross SDK, right? Um, once we have that in place, then each SDK can decide on their own what they're going to do with this first bullet, right? Sure. And, you know, it's going to be pretty much what you already have there. It's just going to be in a more formal document. And right. like I said, I'm not used with other languages, so other people can contribute in terms of what other typical artifacts are being released or expected by the community within that language environment or, you know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Lance, did you want to say something? Because I know she came off mute there for a second. Yeah, I mean, I, you kind of addressed it. I was just wondering where this proposal was going to show up. I'm assuming it, it would show up on the spec repository. But then that sort of makes me start to wonder if there shouldn't be a governance repository because there's a lot of governance stuff going into the spec repo. Do you think we need a whole repository as opposed to just a governance directory? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's, I'm not sure. Um, really, I just wanted to know where this was, where this proposal was going to end up. And, and I'm assuming it's in the spec repo, right? Yeah, I think for now, that's where it has to go. Yeah. If it's cross cutting. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on this topic, then that we need to bring up? Okay, any other topics for the SDK call? All right. Um, I yeah, just want to say, uh, looks like there's been some great progress um, on the TypeScript repo. Uh, so great job, Lance and, and team. Um, if there's, I know there's a lot of rapid changes. Um, I haven't been too involved, but uh, if, yeah, I, I guess um, I'm curious as to like, if there's, any timing that you're thinking of, like, I guess, publishing the, the module? Um, yeah, or just in general? I mean, um, you know, actually, some of this stuff that we're talking about right now in terms of, um, you know, artifacts and processes, um, I, that, that's why I'm keenly interested, because I, I don't want to just publish it uh, you know, right now, um, it's a major change. Um, and, uh, and so I'm a little concerned about doing that. Um, but I also know that, you know, getting it out sooner rather than later would be, would be great because it is completely different than the existing API. Okay. Um, cool. So yeah, I guess, uh, the current, okay, as the last published was 17 days ago. Um, so I guess, does that include um, some of the more recent changes with changing the API? Or, or would we need a major version bump? The changes that went into place with the TypeScript rewrite were breaking API changes. So it would bump the module to 3.0. Um, okay. I think we probably might want to consider continuing to maintain 2.0, but um, I don't know about that yet. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, That's it. okay, thanks Grant. Yeah, I'm glad to hear what you said about the, the TypeScript stuff. I, I'm not following it too closely. I just sort of see the emails go flying by. So it's glad to hear that things are going well. That's good. Yeah, things are working well. Yeah, cool. Great. 
All right, any other topics then on the call? Otherwise we will adjourn. All right, we are done then. Thank you everybody and have a good rest of the day and weekend since it's almost Friday. Cool. Bye everybody. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. -bye.